Hello everyone. Now, today's lecture is on human clothing interaction. Now, this human clothing interaction we will try to discuss here how the clothing, our uh, clothing interact physiology, physio, uh, thermophysiologically with the body. So, clothing if we can see as compared to our bare body, if I am not wearing a clothing and when we actually uh, wear clothing, the difference is that clothing you can see as a thermal barrier it may or may not be comfortable, but first thing is that clothing hinders the free flow of heat from our body or from environment to our body. So, if we consider most of the uh, environmental temperature are uh, less than our body temperature which is 37 degree Celsius. So, what clothing uh, uh, does, it, it does not allow the free flow of heat. So, it hinders the free release of heat from the body, which sometime it uh, may not be required. Like at high temperature, like uh, it is close to our body say 35, 36 degrees Celsius we sometimes feel comfortable when we remove our clothing. So, it unnecessary it uh, hinders the free flow of heat from the body. So, uh, clothing system, so human clothing interaction, human clothing system is a actually is a apparent physiological, quasi physiological system interacting with the body it is a physiological system which interacts with the body. So, we need clothing, it is a basic requirement, but at the same time it actually uh, it has got some uh, interaction, close interaction with the body and that we have to understand. And in uh, this course, we will try to understand this uh, clothing uh, human interaction in various ways. Here, we will discuss basically the heat transmission, heat and mass transmission, but we will discuss other uh, gradually. Okay. So, relationship with the uh, uh, body, the clothing has got it is a two way process. Sometimes clothing helps us from protecting from the extreme environment and it has got its negative impact also. Like clothing protects the wearer from the environmental hazard for which it has been designed. We will discuss in detail like in this temp room say room temperature is say 21, 22 degree Celsius. So, clothing is protecting us from the heat release. So, undue heat release it is protecting clothing, otherwise we will feel uncomfortable or even extreme cold temperature it is a protecting us or extreme heat. So, it protects us we need clothing beside our basic need. So, we need clothing to protect us, but at the same time what it does? It has got some adverse effect, adverse effect by unwanted thermal insulation. Sometimes we do not need thermal insulation and clothing provides that. So, that that is unwanted. So, it is a two way process, one way it helps us uh, protecting and all this thing, but sometimes it provides unwanted thermal insulation and it hinders the free evaporation of sweat from the skin, which is very important. In extreme heat condition, if our sweat 
evaporates quickly, we will feel comfortable or we will feel cooler because sweat during evaporation it will take the latent heat from our body and our body cools down. But the clothing layer which it does it is doing some adverse effect. Adverse effect in the sense it does not allow the free flow of the sweat. So, we have to design our clothing which actually this is the actually higher moisture absorption or moisture transmission is required. So, the metabolic heat production. So, when we are uh, sitting quietly a normal condition it is 80 to 90 watts of heat we produce. So, that which means that that particular heat has to be transmitted and if we wear clothing and clothing hinders that flow. And at high activity level, so when a worker works in front of furnace, the level of heat generation may be more than 1 kilowatt. So, at that level, if clothing uh, prevents the heat to flow out freely, then the body temperature will increase, internal body temperature will increase. So, people may feel uncomfortable. So, that is the uh, that interaction we must first understand, then we can design clothing for comfort ok. And the cooling activity is by sweating. So, when we our body gets heated up, so our another activity another physiological uh, process starts the sweating. Through the sweating so, uh, body tries to cool down, but if our clothing is such that it does not allow the free flow of uh, free evaporation of sweat, then we will feel uncomfortable. Just one simple example, in normal temperature, if we are wearing a clothing made of polythene sheet, impermeable sheet, what will happen? will feel uncomfortably warm, because the moisture the uh, sweat does not get evaporated freely. So, we have to design clothing which transmits moisture or sweat uh, very quickly. Okay. Excessive sweating may also result dehydration due to lack of proper thermal transmission. So, the clothing and human it is a linked mechanism. So, that link has to be proper. The imp so, we, we do not have any control over our human body, but we have proper control of our clothing. So, depending on our human body requirement we have to select clothing. So, that proper linkage between human body and clothing is there. And if this link is not proper, what will happen? Either we will feel uh, we will have uh, body heat increase or excessive sweating and which actually result person feel sick or dizzy. So, this type of proper linking we have to establish. So, this is the picture which is uh, very commonly available and this diagram shows the what are the activities going on, what are the physiological or thermophysiological activities going on in this uh, clothing human interaction. If we see the main the food the main metabolic heat sources or the liver, the main energy sources which generates uh, heat and that heat we have to actually get uh, transmitted from our body. And not only this heat, but other metabolic heat it uh, generates. So, this heat has to be 
transmitted okay. otherwise our body will get heated up. So, this thermal transmission if you see this uh, picture the thermal resistance of fabric which is very important. So, we have to control the thermal tra resistance thermal uh, transmission characteristics of fabric. So, that we can control the heat if we need the heat to be transmitted at high rate. So, accordingly we have to select the clothing. Next is that thermal resistance of air layer one is the clothing layer next is the air layer. So, we can control the thickness of air steel air by selecting the, the tightness of the clothing. As I have mentioned that if we were a loose fit clothing. So, this air layer will be thicker that means, the fabric will give the clothing will give higher insulation. Next is the the sweating the sweating is the most important mechanism for cooling down. Now, sweat has to be evaporated then only we will feel cooling otherwise if sweat does not evap get evaporated suppose we are wearing a clothing as I have mentioned made of impermeable fabric what will happen. Sweat is not coming out and it is not getting evaporated our body is not getting cold what to make our body cold our physiologically that it will start actually body will start generating more and more sweat and the will start losing sweat and it will sweat will simply drip inside the body uh, in the microclimate. But if our clothing is selected in such a fashion that it it transmits moisture and evaporates then we will not have too much sweat our body gets cooled down. So, sweating is the most important cooling mechanism of human body and cooling by insens insensible sweating. So, what is insensible sweating? We are sitting idle we are not sweating we are not uh, it is not visible it does not mean that we are not releasing the sweat it is called it is in the vapor form directly in the vapor form it gets released from our body. So, we are feeling comfortable and also cooling by breathing and evaporation that is also, but it is uh, nothing to do with the clothing and heat transmission by convection. So, convective heat transmission is one of the a parameter, but where it transmits through the movement of the um, medium. So, that is the convective heat transmission. Convective heat transmission is uh, predominant when in blowing air it is a uh, when air is uh, blowing so that means, it it is a forced convection is taking place or else suppose I am wearing loose loose fit shirt or loose fit uh, dress. So, during my movement there is a bellow effect which actually pumps the air from the body and uh, it is a, a proper air circulation is taking place through that mechanism it is a convective mechanism we, uh, we can release it and heat by radiation so, heat transmission by radiation. This is the mechanism which is in clothing which is actually most important radiative heat transmission is a major component in heat. If we can control the radiative heat transmission either from going out from our body or from uh, receiving from our body if we can control then we can be comfortable okay. heat transmission by radiation then as I have mentioned heat transmission by ventilation. So, it, uh, it flows and uh, so these are the mechanism of it and conduction is also one of the major uh, characteristic uh, uh, parameters. So, uh, this mechanism conduction mechanism and also from unclothed portion also we conduct. Now, 
So, human body we can uh, consider as a thermal engine with a very low efficiency 5 to 25 percent of the efficiency. Now, we will discuss the fundamental of human thermal physiology. So, if we understand this uh, human thermal uh, physiology without clothing, we will we'll first try to understand the human uh, thermal physiology without clothing, then we can incorporate clothing. So, first we have to understand this is uh, taken from uh, open source, uh, the source is given here. So, first we will uh, discuss in two distinct situation, one is the cold situation. Cold situation, suppose a person without any cloth, he is sitting in a room of say 23 degree Celsius, it is ambient room ambient temperature is 23 degree Celsius. So, we will try to understand what are the different mechanisms of heat transmission and quantify, try to quantify, then we will we'll, we'll understand the importance of different mechanisms. This, uh, this is the simple model which shows a person with at the room of 23 at the environment of 23 degree Celsius okay. and as he is not doing any activity. So, the metabolic heat basal production of heat which he is generating it is a 90 watt. <coughs> so, 90 watt heat he has he is generating that much heat he has to transmit out he has to transmit to the environment, then you will feel comfortable. If this balancing is not there, then you will feel uncomfortable. Now, try to see. So, if we understand this basic phenomena, then we can incorporate clothing on it. Now, try to see one just implication you can see in this model the radiation, radiative heat transmission is 133 watt. So, this is the most important phenomena or uh, principle of heat transmission. So, this person at this temperature of 23 degree Celsius, he is uh, uh, releasing heat through perspiration at the rate of 17 watt through conduction it is a 11 watt and through radiation 133 watt. So, that means, whatever he what, uh, what is the amount of heat he is producing he is a 90 watt, but what is the amount of heat he is releasing it is much more than the heat production. That means, it is heat balancing is not there. So, he is actually he will he will feel uncomfortably cold. So, if you know the difference of this, so to make him comfortable, what we have to do? We have to uh, use a cloth to balance these things, this heat flow. It is very simple. So, if we know the basic calculation, so then we can select our clothing. So, these things we will do gradually. So, this model indicates that an unclothed person at rest in a room temperature of 23 degree Celsius would feel uncomfortably cold, but normally in AC room at 23 degree Celsius we do not feel uncomfortably cold, because we control our heat flow. Okay. Now, let us see how do we achieve all this parameter value. So, first is that the assumption is that the at this 23 degree Celsius temperature our average mean skin temperature is 34 degree Celsius. So, there, there are uh, techniques 
to measure the temperature skin temperature because it is a weighted. So, at different body different places our temperature body temperature skin temperature although body temperature is 37 degree Celsius it, it, it does not change, but skin temperature is uh, it, it changes it may be say some in at some place you may it may be say 20 degree Celsius or 25 degree Celsius or different. So, mean temperature we as we will assume here at 34 degree Celsius that is our assumption. Okay. Now, first we have to see that uh, we will uh, try to calculate the perspiration. Through perspiration we have mentioned that he is going to release the heat of 17 watt. Now, let us see how to achieve this 17 watt. Okay. There are various assumptions, uh, not only uh, we cannot say assumptions, these are the uh, standard uh, values are available in the literature. Okay. So, first assumption is that, that even when one is unaware that is insensible perspiration we release around say about 600 gram of moisture in one day at that temperature say 23 degrees that is, this is an assumption but we normally uh, release in that but if you increase the temperature the this value may be little bit high so at that temperature it is assumed that it's a 600 gram he is releasing the heat in one day. The cooling effect of perspiration is due to evaporative cooling that is heat of vaporization it is a latent heat of vaporization. So, what is the latent heat of vaporization normally we think 540 calories per gram, but this latent heat of vaporization it is a it is a boiling at the boiling point of 100 degree Celsius of water, but if we talk about the skin temperature at the skin temperature if the moisture has to get evaporated it needs little bit higher latent heat. So, you can see the you can refer the literature at, at skin temperature it is around 580 calorie per so, we will not use 540, we will use 580 because we are using the room our body temperature. Okay. Now, the calculation is very simple. So, we are, we are concentrating only on this, only on the perspiration. What is another thing the specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram per degree Celsius that is the specific heat and if we convert it uh, the calorie to in joule it will be 4.186 this much joule per gram per degree Celsius that is specific heat of water. Now, now there is a simple calculation you just try to see what is this 600 gram per day is releasing the moisture it is not sweating cannot sweat because at the we have our assumption is that it is a 23 degree Celsius this 600 gram per day okay, and you convert it to how much calorie is required. So, for 1 gram we require 580 calorie. So, this multiplied by 580 calorie that gives the 600 into 5 uh, multiplied by 580 calorie per gram. Now, if we want to convert it to joule that means, this is the this much joule and this is per day joule per day and you convert it to second. So, if you calculate this you will come around 17 watt. So, this is our actually basic uh, idea we should have uh, knowledge about the basic uh, value. So, around 17 to 20 watt we release the heat when we are not sweating 
and our temperature difference is that 23 degree Celsius. Okay. Now, so this is all about the only evaporation. So, and uh, we can uh, that uh, that 600 gram as we have mentioned, it changes with the temperature. So, if we increase the temperature, our rate of moisture release will be more, and if we reduce the temperature, it will be little bit low. But there will it will be there. But you can see that uh, this is not that significant. It's a 17 watt. We are generating the heat at uh, 90 watt rate. Next is that by conduction. Now, assumption is that we are not uh, we are not considering any clothing; it's a unclothed person. So only conduction is by conduct uh, by the air layer. Heat conduction by the only by air layer, steel air layer. The basic heat transmission equation is this one. So you can see, it's the thermal conductivity of the medium. Here nothing is there, it is a air, but if we consider some clothing, the clothing's thermal conductivity you have to use. Then area, area of the body, whole body and this is the T hot means in our case it is a skin and T cold means it is a, it is a environment because the heat will flow from our body to the environment. Okay. So, this is the differ difference and T is in it is Kelvin scale okay. and area of the body if we assume it is a 2 square meter and K thermal conductivity of uh, steel air uh, this is the standard value and D, D is the thickness in our in this in the present case the thickness is the thickness of the air layer. Here the assumption is that from the basic study research study the assumption is that the it is a d is 5 centimeter what does it mean? This is strongly as an assumption that means which is the distance from this is the distance from the skin after that that point after 5 centimeter the temperature will be 23 degree Celsius, because skin, skin temperature is, uh, is uh, 34 degree Celsius, gradually the temperature will drop and after 5 centimeter it is assumed that temperature will be at per the room temperature. So, if we use all these parameters and uh, apply on this equation, we will get the value around 11 watt, we can test. So, this uh, uh, these are the basic key. So, we know that by conduction, cooling by conduction is it is also insignificant, it is 11 watt only. Now, what is the next? Next is the cooling by radiation, which is major chunk. So, radiation is uh, actually takes place, you can see it takes place using the Stephen Boltzmann law. This is the heat due to radiation. Now, area again A is the area of human, uh, but it is a 2 square uh, meter. E is the emissivity of the skin, it is a standard value is there and here that this is the temperature of the skin and T cold is the again temperature of the and it is a it is a fourth order. In um, conduction it is a order is uh, one single order, it is a um, uh, radiation it flows in a fourth order. What, what does it mean? Which means a uh, temperature, smallest temperature change in which will affect the radiative heat, very high radiative heat. Okay. So, this is these are the answers again. So, area of the human body is that it is a it is a 2 square meter, and so this E is the emissivity of the skin, it is a 0.97. It is a basically for a near ideal radiator, it is close to ideal. Radiator. So, for perfect radiator, it is a E is 1, it is a 0.97 for it. This is the standard value which is available in the literature, and this sigma is the 
it is a stiffen Boltzmann constant which is known and T hot here actually it is a you have to use you must use the the in Kelvin scale ok. It is not the difference it is a difference in the fourth order difference. So, Kelvin scale so uh, our body temperature what we assumed it was 34 degree Celsius. So, in Kelvin it will become 3 uh, 307 degree Kelvin and uh, the cold it was 23 degree Celsius. So, it will become 296. So, uh, degree and if you apply if you use all these parameters we will get the value of 133 watt. So, what does it show? It shows that <coughs> the measure heat transmission from our body it is by the radiation. <coughs> so, and also we have mentioned that the, the person is uh, in when he is unclothed he is actually uncomfortably cool feeling he is having feeling of uncomfortably cool. So, if we want to make him comfortable. So, what do we have to which parameter which mechanism we have to target by in a clothing. If we try to target say conduction it will not work it will not be or perspiration although this you have to also uh, take care because perspiration and all this this what we are taking it is a heat we are talking, but there are other uh, impacts also. But if we normally we try to uh, forget the radiative heat control, but this model shows in our clothing if we control the radiative heat moving out from our body by whatever means we can control the we can uh, impart comfort on him. Radiative heat con you can control by um, uh, ends per inch peaks per inch or um, uh, fabric structure or uh, different layers you can control that we will discuss, but radiative heat which shows it is a extremely important. Now, another uh, implication you can see we can just do a little bit calculation if you calculate suppose in place of 23 degree Celsius you simply change 1 degree. So, it is become 22 degree Celsius. So, it, it uh, if it is 22 degree Celsius so it will be 295 degree Kelvin Kelvin. So, you will see there will be a significant impact on the radiative heat transmission, but the impact on uh, this uh, will not be that much significant. So, it will be huge change in radiative heat transmission. So, radiative heat is extremely important in uh, and we have to control this we have to block this radiative heat and cooling by convection. So, it is a basically convection is uh, we cannot uh, quantify it is a linked with the air flow linked with the ventilation linked with the bellow effect. What is bellow effect? Uh, loose uh, clothing when it moves it tries to keep a bellow effect it pumps air from inside to outside and it takes air from outside to inside. So, this uh, these are uh, linked. So, ultimately it gives cooling effect. So, convection involves the transport of energy by means of motion of of the heat transfer medium. So, it has to move heat transfer medium has to move and uh, in this case the surrounding air when it is his unclothed person it is a surrounding air when it is a clothed person it is a heat in microclimate. Now, next uh, parameter is that next next situation is the the a person who is in the warm condition. Earlier we have discussed a condition which is in a cooler condition, and suppose a condition is a which is the temp environmental temperature is above the body temperature, <coughs> like in summer, or a person in front of any 
uh, furnace or a firefighter. So, in this type of situation what is happening? So, here a uh, simple uh, um, uh, model here it is assumed that say environmental temperature is the say 45 degree Celsius. So, 45 degree Celsius temperature what is going to happen? What is happening here just say. So, all the mechanism works in against that it is opposite direction like radiative heat outside temperature is more than our body temperature that means radiative heat in earlier case what we have observed the radiative heat is going out from our body, but here we will start receiving the heat through conduction we will start receiving the heat convection also convection. So, and at the same time our body is generating a metabolic heat. Suppose in this uh, room the temperature is suddenly increased to 45 degree Celsius and an unclothed person will feel like that he started receiving the heat from all the sources. So, the now how will you balance the heat? How the body will be balanced? Okay. So, even when he is inactive, so he will develop, uh, generate at 90 watt heat. So, here this model says he is generating 90 watt heat that is basal heat through radiation he is receiving heat of 109 watt earlier case he was releasing it here he is, is releasing, receiving it through conduction he is receiving 8 watt. So, this calculation we will do again that means his total heat in the body is is the uh, it is a 90 plus 109 plus 8 is the total amount of heat he is generating. Now, his body will start getting warm up and as you uh, keep on receiving heat the body temperature will keep on increasing and then it will become fatal at some time. So, our body can uh, we can survive 37 degree plus minus maximum 3 to 4 degree Celsius. So, if we keep on receiving heat what will happen? Our body temperature will increase. So, there is the physiological parameters happen that means, the due to physio body physiology our sweating will start. So, at that temperature at 45 degree Celsius temperature when we start receiving the uh, uh, heat from different sources our body will st uh, actually uh, temperature will increase to keep our body cool our body another physiology activity will start body will start sweating and sweat will come out from the body and this sweat if it simply drifts out then we will not get cold will not actually our body will not cool down this sweat has to get evaporated from the body. So, for unclothed person it is uh, if he evaporate if the sweat evaporates uh, then it will be uh, then you will actually maintain the uh, body heat. Suppose at 45 degree Celsius temperature very high temperature or 50 degree Celsius temperature it is highly humid it is a very humid 100 percent humidity relative humidity. what will happen the sweat will not get evaporated it will simply drip then it is a danger it is a basically it is a dangerous condition. So, sweat has to be evaporated then what we have to have some other you have to you can actually uh, switch on the fan so that body air movement is there. So, somehow that sweat has to get evaporated if sweat start dripping 
then he will keep on losing the uh, water and at the same time temperature will not be reduced, will not be under control. So, to have these things, so uh, proper perspiration and evaporation of perspiration should be there and here we can see the evaporative perspiration is actually is losing 207 watt. That means, almost it is <coughs> balanced. So, and we can uh, as we can imagine for a con uh, clothed person how to control all, the, all these things. So, first uh, we will discuss the so first thing by clothing what we will have to do? We will have to actually block the radiative heat. If we can block the radiative heat and it uh, because you will actually we can uh, uh, reduce the intake of it from the body. So, uh, we will do these things. So, uh, at present we are discussing a person or uh, unclothed person. So, he is receiving the heat from the body. So, this becomes a problem when the ambient temperature is above the body temperature. So, ambient temperature when it is a lower than the body temperature, he is uh, uncomfortably cool, but we can simply wear a clothing simple layer of clothing. You use single layer, you use double layer, you keep on increasing the thickness and you can control the body heat to be released from the body to the environment. But it is not that simple to block the heat from coming out. So, it is so the this is become a problem when the environmental temperature is above the body temperature, because all this standard heat transmission mechanism work against the loss of. So, we have to finally, release the heat. So, all this standard means conduction, convection and radiation, these are actually working against the normal body heat. So, the parameter which is the evaporative cooling is the it at this point it is a significant one. So, evaporative cooling as we have seen it is a 207 watts. So, first we will discuss that the different types of phenomena different types of mechanism here we will discuss our ability to exist in such condition comes from the efficiency of cooling by the evaporative cooling of person. So, we can actually survive in that condition if the evaporative cooling is. So, and uh, in our next lecture we will discuss this uh, phenomena in detail. Okay. So, thank you.